<laughs> Hello. I am just laughing at myself because it's been months with me not having any revelations or aha moments and then I have a couple within a few days and well that's just the way life is kind of perverse isn't it because I've been in the dark for a long time spirit has had me on pause on hold and I am still in the dark pretty much about what's going to happen and what I'm supposed to be doing but I'm starting to get some aha moments or revelations, which I'm relieved about because I don't like being in the dark. I really don't like being in the dark in actuality. In my bedroom, I have lights on. They're on all night. For me, the dark is scary and I don't like being scared. Okay, so that's maybe a little too much information that you don't need, but it actually does tie into what I wanted to talk about, which is kind of about being scared. So I don't like surprises. I never have, as long as I can remember. Really, I don't have all that many memories of being surprised, except for a couple. When my dad got transferred, when we lived in Pendleton, Oregon, I was, I guess, 15 or 16 because I had a friend that could drive, so she was 16. And we were supposed to go to a movie, as far as I knew. She picked me up. We got almost to the movie theater. And then she said, oh, I forgot something at home. And it was a long way back to her house. And I was like, but we're going to miss the movie. And she was like, well, I have to have my purse. I don't have my license. I don't have my money, really. I don't remember what the excuses were, but it was compelling enough that I couldn't really argue about it. But I was so pissed off because this was supposed to be my going away thing where, you know, I think it was four of us girls we're just going to do something to say goodbye to me. And it was ruined. It was ruined because we were going to miss the movie. So we go back to her house. And I walk in and it was, surprise! She had planned a, a surprise party. And I don't even remember who else was there. I don't think I had more than three girlfriends. So maybe it was just her family and some goodies you know, with the brain surgeries, my memories are not all that clear. But I do remember the irritation and then walking into the surprise and not being able to enjoy it, really. It had to put a smile on my face and be fake about it. But the whole thing had thrown me so much that I really couldn't reset, at least not quickly. I must have put on a pretty good face for it because I don't remember being hassled about, aren't you surprised, aren't you pleased? But I do remember it wasn't fun for me to have that surprise. And then when my ex-husband proposed to me, it was across a table in a public restaurant, which is really not the kind of proposal I would have chosen. I would have liked something intimate, you know, just the two of us, something romantic and heartfelt instead of being like a public thing that people could watch. And then we got up after dinner and we were going down the hall that would lead to the dance floor. It was the place we had met and there was a dance floor. But he stopped and there were some accordion doors, I think they called them, to the left of us. And all of a sudden he pulled one open. And I was like, what? That's where they have banquets and big gatherings. And surprise! Again, this was my parents, my sister, and her fiancé, his parents, I don't think there was anyone else, but again, you know, 
this was a damn long time ago. I have a fuzzy memory. And, you know, if the proposal had not been something I could agree to, to have it in a public place and then to have all these people gathered would have made it very awkward. But, you know, it wasn't a surprise I enjoyed, especially since, you know, my mom had to make sure to pull me aside and say, you know you're not going to get married before your sister. I mean, the whole thing was they all knew that I was going to be proposed to before I did. It really was awkward. And I'm sure that my ex-husband thought it would be wonderful. Or, you know, maybe there was something about having other people observe, celebrate. I don't know. It wasn't what I would have wanted. It's not anything I ever told him. Again, I just put on the polite, happy face, you know, but it just wasn't fun for me to be surprised in that way. Now, you may wonder, what, is she just sitting here bitching about, you know, this and that? Well, that really wasn't my intention, but, you know, I don't script these things out. I sit down, I turn on the lights, I start the camera and I start talking. So I can't promise that they are always going to flow nicely and probably rarely do they. But the thing is, it was in the shower the other day, yesterday, I guess. And I talk to spirit all the time in the shower. It's like a meditation time for me. The, you know, at this point, my channel is always open pretty much unless I am so stressed out. So I talk to spirit a lot. They're my companionship because I don't have companionship except for the dogs, you know, my dog and my grand dog, except when my daughter is here from work and she works a lot and, you know, she does her own thing. She plays her games in her room anyway. I mean, I, oh, this just does sound like a poor me session, but you know, I'm alone most of the time. So spirit, my spiritual team, is my companionship. And I was saying, I don't get why I have to be in the dark like this. And I've heard readings where it says, you know, you're going to be surprised and it's going to be even better than anything you ever thought it would be. You know, all these things that I'm in the dark on. And I was like, I don't get it. You know, I hate surprises. I don't get it. Why does everything have to be a surprise? I don't like surprises. Surprises stress me out. It's not a happy thing. It's not a fun thing. I mean, for some reason, I was getting worked up about it because, you know, it's been such a long pause. And then to be waiting on a surprise, which, you know, maybe a lot of people love surprises, but not me. And then the aha moment, it clicked. Why don't I like surprises? I don't like surprises because when I was young, the surprises were not good things. And so, sorry, I'm getting emotional. What a weird thing. Sorry, just give me a minute. I don't like surprises because they didn't bring anything that I was pleased to be surprised with when I was young. And so, you know, finally realizing that, why I have always reacted negatively to surprises, I then had to push my spiritual team a little farther. So, okay, now I get why I don't like them. You've been with me forever. You know why I don't like them. Why is it that I'm being kept in the dark and that everything has to be a surprise when you know I don't like it? Well, because I am in this big shift where I'm leaving my old me behind and stepping into a new me that's supposed to have less fear. Boy, I'm getting all emotional. This is crazy. I wasn't planning on this, but damn it, I want to get this thing done. I don't want to do another take. <laughs> and I'm in this place where I really, you know, I don't know who the hell I am because I have left a lot of bad 
patterns behind me, but I haven't added new life yet to establish new patterns. So I just feel like I'm this malleable blob and no one's molding me, including me, because I don't know how to mold myself for something that is a surprise, unknown. <sighs> Sorry. So, you know, I guess, why am I even making this video? Because if you have had trauma and you don't like surprises either and you don't know why you don't like them, well, there's one suggestion because the surprises for us were not fun. They were not exciting. They weren't anything but bad stuff. So I'll just share my little light bulb moment as far as the reason for not liking surprises with you in case that's you. But the other thing is, I don't think I'm the only one who has been in this in-between state. I think that, you know, we are at a time in you know, ascension and all these people having their spiritual awakenings and things shifting. And, you know, I don't like that new world bullshit and chosen ones and stuff. I, you know, I don't like the buzzwords and I don't like the exclusivity that people put on that chosen one thing. And um, really, I didn't come into this a cranky bit, but I sure am feeling like it all of a sudden. I guess it's stressing me out to remember You know, I do like to run away from these things. And when you are sitting as this malleable blob and there's no one to have fun with, you're just by yourself all the time, you think a lot. And although I do appreciate the insights that come in, I do appreciate that I have grown quite a bit. You know, the isolation has gotten a bit stressful. And the not knowing who I'm supposed to be has gotten to be stressful. And this, if you are in the same place, is when we are supposed to use this time to look back at who we were. And even if we don't know who we're going to be, we at least know that we have grown considerably. This is, for me, that stage that I think I have shared called the Buddha phase or the spiritual mastery phase. So I have had one test after another. And I haven't had many aha moments. I just realized that I've passed the test by not instantly going to fear. Or maybe I instantly went to fear, but I snapped out of it faster than I used to. I mean, I have noticed that I have grown. But I do appreciate that finally I'm starting to get some insights. And I guess spirit just wants me to learn that not every surprise is an awful thing. Which was the whole point of this damn video. I'm not stoned. I haven't been drinking. I'm very emotional all of a sudden and I'm not sure why. You know, the energies, this mercury retrograde and whatever else is going on they become harder and harder for me to deal with. And I do apologize, but I think there is a point to this. You're just going to have to put up with my rambling. <laughs> and I'm sorry about that. We get to this stage and we have all this testing and we can see that we've grown and this is when we're supposed to be going, yay for me. You know, and yeah, yay for me. But the testing is hard. And then the energy's on top of it. Oh, God, I just snagged my sweater with my watch band. Ah, quit moving your arms and it won't happen, Peggy. The whole point of... What's been going on for me lately is to see that I am choosing love rather than fear. I think that's what this Buddha phase is about, not just choosing peace over chaos, but choosing love over fear. 
because when the tests come up, you know, I instantly react because I have this inability to handle stress. But I snap back quicker now, and then I will talk to myself and say, if I were loving to myself, would I choose to continue this level of stress, or would I somehow figure out how to ratchet it down, whether that's taking another hydrocortisone or just, you know, dumping the energy energetically or taking a warm shower or getting out in the fresh air and just breathing. You know, I am choosing whatever it is quicker to kind of de-escalate things and to choose love over fear. So I'm not sure there was really much point to this. I think there might have been a few little things in there. But if you're feeling really stressed out, you're not alone, obviously. So am I. I mean, I'm crying for no reason. I'm anxious all the time. I have heard that this is part of Mercury retrograde. Your energy is going to be different. If you normally have a lot of energy, you may find that you're lethargic or sluggish. You may have tons of extra energy, but you realize that it's like nervous energy, anxious energy. So I think it is the Mercury retrograde, and maybe there's the most valid reason that I made this video today, <laughs> right now. I'm sorry, or maybe I just wanted you to appreciate my lavender hair, and let's see if I can show you. The roots came out kind of silver, which is kind of cool. I mean, that's how I would like my real hair to look instead of salt and pepper, but, you know, here I am griping. I cover it up the best I can, but, you know, at some point, my hair is just going to go, uh oh, oh, fuck this, you're not putting any more of that on me, and I'm going to deal with salt and pepper, but I really like the silver that peeks through. You know, I'm backwards. You know, I never can hold a card in the right direction. There we go. The camera is filming opposite, and that doesn't help because I'm always backwards anyway. <laughs> Oh my God, you guys, I'm sorry I subjected you to this, but you know, if nothing else, you could say, oh my God, look at her. She is a total basket case. I am not. So at least it'll make you compare and go, hey, I'm doing way better than she is. I should be happy. I am going to be ending on TikTok. It just hasn't been feeling right for a while the atmosphere, some things that have been going on in the spiritual community there. But I have started a couple of podcasts. I think I shared a little video, but right now I can't remember. I have one that is talking about my spiritual awakening and all the bullshit that happened after my brain surgeries and how I coped and what I went through and blah, 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 blah. That one is called Empowering Guidance. And... Then I have started another one to share oracle cards that is called Empowering Guidance Oracle because I have gotten permission graciously from Blue Angel Publishing to share the decks I have from them and I have a substantial number of them. Well, you can see back there. There's a couple shelves worth of Blue Angel decks. And so... Um, if you like to have Oracle card guidance, I'm hoping to do it pretty much every day. You can go to my website, empowering-guidance.com, and there are two, well, that would be four, two embeddable players with both of the podcasts, if you would like, or iTunes, Spotify, Amazon Music, Podchaser, Player FM, there might be another one. But I will be offering live sessions when I get enough followers to justify even trying that. And if you access that on the Podbean app, then you can call in and I can pull cards for you directly. I don't know. It's just a whole different format. I don't have to even worry how shitty I look. I don't have to put a mascara or anything because it's just my voice. Although I'm not sure about the lives, I guess I better investigate that. But as far as sharing the daily cards, I can be in my bathrobe at 3 in the morning and no one's going to give a shit. 
So I kind of like that. Anyway. Yeah, if you're feeling like this, obviously you're not alone. If you're not feeling like this, yay for you. And I am sincerely happy for you. And if you're having aha moments too, share them in the comments with me, please. Distract me from this. Take care.